Hello everyone, this is Chromatic Photophore. Today we're going to review Evade by SoundSpot, a fantastic volume shaping plugin that can be used for anything from sidechain style ducking effects to transient shaping to sound design, so let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to play a basic bass line and kick without Evade, then with. So here's without first. So nice and simple. Let's turn Evade on. We're just using the default template. This is what it'll do. So what this plugin is doing is it is adjusting the volume of the incoming signal based on the shape of this LFO waveform. So I can do all kinds of different things with it. Like I can double click to add nodes wherever I want, I can adjust the curve between the nodes to determine how sharply the volume changes between nodes. I can double click a node to remove it. I can adjust the amount to determine how much of the LFO is applied to the main bass signal. So for instance, if I tweak the amount, So with that, you can actually really hear that turning the amount down allows the original signal to come through a little more unaffected. So that's good for balancing any effect that you have with a ev with evade to the main signal, give you what exactly how much you control you want over that. I can adjust the speed of the LFO in two ways. First, with this drop down menu here, this determines how fast my bar plays. So right now it's by default at a quarter bar, basically one beat. I can adjust it to an eighth of a bar, basically half a beat. Now I'll be honest when I say that sounds a little funny. I can change that by flipping the direction of the LFO with this button here. So left to right or right to left is how it'll play out. So now if I listen to it, turns it into almost more of a gate, which is extra handy. You can have a gate and a side chain ducking tool all mixed together without having to set up any complex routing chains. Uh, one other thing that, that helps you adjust that time, as I mentioned, is this little dot over here. So one dot is a straight note, two dots is triplets, three dots is a dotted note. So let me put it back to a quarter bar. We're gonna put it on dotted mode We've been on straight note this whole time. Let me turn off the kick so you can kind of hear what triplet does. So you can hear sort of one, two, three, one, two, three kind of feel to it. So this is one nice way to sort of convert it into a almost three, four or six, eight timing rhythm versus just going with standard four, four or anything like that. If I do a dotted note with the three notes, then that makes it so that I can get some, some nice little syncopation feels to what I'm doing. So lots of neat little options for timing based on these dots and on the drop down menu for the bar length. One thing you'll notice is that right now I have it set to a waveform display where I can actually see the shape of my sound. This is useful for helping me see how the plugin is affecting the sound I'm working with. If I click this button here, I can switch it to a spectrogram, which will actually be enabled by default. So I can see the frequencies that are being fed into the plugin. So this makes it so that you can see exactly what frequencies you're working with. This is especially handy because it has a low pass and high pass filter, filter built into the plugin. If I adjust either of them, then you'll see that a section of the screen will be highlighted. What this does is whatever is highlighted, whatever frequencies are highlighted, you know, this is the base end, this is the high end, those frequencies will pass through the LFO tool completely unaffected. So this makes for a lot of interesting options to add movement or character to bass lines or any number of other synths. So for instance, I'm gonna slowly adjust the, the low pass filter and you'll kind of hear what it does to the bass line. I'm going to go ahead and switch it back to the waveform display so you can also see what it's doing. Yeah. 
so you can hear that the lower frequencies start coming through, gives it a lot more movement. I use the high pass filter quite a bit more often on this thing in that I can use it on a bass to allow some more of the buzzy features of the bass line to come through while, while cutting out the bass frequencies themselves according to the LFO. So that makes it so that my kick can shine through a little more. So let's go ahead and listen to that. So you'll notice that as I adjusted that up, that suddenly the kick became a lot more clear than when we had it all the way to the left, allowing everything to pass through. So just fantastic in that this thing becomes a, an excellent mixing tool for both ducking volume and ducking frequencies, which is just a fantastic idea. I just love that about this thing. There are several other features of this, for instance, with low pass and the high pass filters engaged, I have the ability to determine which band is actually being affected by the LFO. So for instance, right now, I can change that with this tool here. With that, the middle band is the one that's actually being affected by the LFO tool. With this, it's the outer bands that are affected. So you can hear the change pretty strongly when I turn this on. So that can make for a lot of really nice options with just changing the character of your sound as it's playing, especially if you automate that. There are four other knobs that adjust the sound. So there's the smooth knob, which basically smooths the curve of the LFO. There is the phase knob, which determines where in the LFO drawing does the LFO begin. So for instance, if I adjust it, you'll see a little white line appear up here. That tells me this is gonna be my new phase starting point. So for instance, let's play it. Lots of neat little sound design options with that. There is a mono stereo or mid side section. Let me double click that to reset it. So this determines whether or not I'm working with only stereo signal or mono signal. It's also a great way to check if you actually have stereo information on your sound or sample that you're working with. So if I put it all the way to 100%, only stereo information, and we can actually hear that this bass has some, not much, which is why it's so quiet. That can be problematic for the bass line in that that can cause phase cancellation. So, if I adjust it all the way the other direction, we get the mono or mid signal. So, suddenly in this plugin, you even have the ability to do a little bit of stereo enhancement or or stereo removal even. So to me, that's not even necessary for the volume ducking or anything like that, but it's sound, sound spot really likes to just add all the stuff that into one plugin that they would normally put in an entire chain of, of plugins to get a desired effect. So that's a handy thing. There's a pulse width, pulse width modulation knob, which frankly, I don't understand the science behind, but my understanding of it is that it can be used to make sounds punchier or softer. So 100%. We get a more punchy sound. Neg 100, we get a softer sound, for example. This can be useful if you allow a little bit of low frequencies to pass through and creating a sort of soft arpeggio. just to give your stuff a little more character there. Now, right now I've been showing you exclusively the ducking functions that this thing can be used for. But again, 
You can shape this waveform to anything you want. Double click to remove, double click to add, so on and so forth. So, I actually created a separate one that I used on a snare. The snare has a particularly punchy transient. Let's listen to it. So definitely a sharp transient. I changed the shape of the LFO for this one to cut the, the volume on the transient while boosting the body and the tail of the, of the sample. So it almost functions like a compressor in this case. So let's turn it on and listen to what it does to the snare. So ducks the initial volume and while making the rest of it a little more even in volume, gives it a lot of body that normally wouldn't be in that snare. I can adjust the volume so that I have basically a gate. Do all kinds of different things with this with these shapes. You can make it all sorts of crazy. Just make a very, very buzzy random waveform and turn the 32 up to just make a weird crunchy snare. So suddenly we can actually do a lot of sound synthesis with this thing. As far as my personal opinion of the plugin, in case you couldn't tell, I like it a lot. I find it to be incredibly useful, particularly for EDM, but I've used this on even orchestral style pieces when I needed to kind of control uh, resonating bass lines a little bit more. Uh, I find that this thing is just incredible. The only thing that I would like about it that I think could be better, there is a bypass button down here. A couple things, actually. So the, there's this bypass button down here for turning the effect off, so you can kind of hear it quickly without having to navigate away from the plugin, you know, hear how much you're affecting the sound. One problem I've noticed with that is that this seems like it actually adds a little bit of odd slowness to the CPU. Like, I can even see, like, over here that my CPU kind of tweaks a little bit more quickly. When I turn it on, suddenly it slows down. It appears like it's, like it's not doing much, but I've had problems with this bypass button in the past. So I usually just bypass it in the mixer and forego that issue entirely. Uh, the, main th the main thing that I think could really change this plugin and make it... Uh, like a volume shaping powerhouse, if it isn't one already, of course, would be making it dynamic. Right now it's static, so it only responds based on the LFO shape that you draw. Dynamic would basically make it more like track spacer, where it ducks according to the signal that it receives. So if so like it basically has the same features that track spacer has, ex like you know, the same low pass and high pass filters that determine what's actually getting ducked, but main difference, it's not dynamic. That's that's the one thing I would really like is for it to behave more like track spacer where where you can put any signal into it and it ducks the stuff. I would love that, but that's purely nitpicking on my part. I'd still give this five out of five stars. Just this is one of SoundSpot's plugins that I would honestly recommend to anyone.